good morning, church. Come and join us for worship. Hey, yeah. Oh, we invite you here today. Oh, we invite you here today, Lord. Oh, we worship you alone. Yeah, we see the evidence of you all around. Yeah, we see the evidence of your goodness all around us. Oh, we love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness, for your kindness. Oh, we love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. I see the evidence of your goodness.
evidence I see the evidence of your goodness All over my life All over my life I see your promises and fulfillment All over my life All over my life Oh, I see you now I see you working in my life Oh, I look to you and you alone Cause you are faithful You are faithful the circumstance you're going through he wants to give you faith he wants to give you courage to believe that he's gonna fight your battle he's gonna be with you if you're struggling in your marriage if you're struggling in your finances with your business he is with you you're not alone let's be encouraged in his presence
we need to do the Lord is inviting us to focus on him you know when when temptation comes when difficult circumstances the battle is going on confusion comes sometimes we don't know what to do we don't know how to react and this song says it all just look to the Lamb it's focus on him and say Lord give me the strength give me your perspective in life Lord would you sing it again and say look to the Lamb
Spirit of the Lord is here this morning and I can see that there's so many people standing here today that you're feeling that shame that we sang about in that last song. That shame that that the enemy says that we're not good enough, that we can't measure up. And I just I just could when we were singing about the the lamb upon the cross. When I, when you look, you don't see a lamb, you see the lion of Judah because he wants us to know this morning that he has all authority he has all power and his blood sets us free his blood sets us free today if you're standing here and you're and you're you're feeling that shame and you're feeling like you can never get ahead that you can never get delivered that God is not there for you that he's there for the person next to you but not you the Lord says to you that is the liar speaking because he said I am all authority I am all power I am sitting on the throne this morning and my name is the Lion of Judah and I am the Lion and I have the blood and the blood sets you free. We don't have to set ourselves free today. Jesus is here. Jesus is here and he is here to save us and he is here to deliver us. Aren't you happy for Jesus today? Aren't you glad that you serve a living God? A living God that speaks and loves and cares and delivers us. Thank you Father. You may be seated. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I just love it when the Lord shows up. Don't you love it? I mean, it's like, I don't want to go to church and play church. Do you? I want to go to church and meet him and be with him and spend time with him and feel his presence. The worship was fantastic. Omar, we didn't know you had it in you. <laughs> we did know. <laughs> He's a, these, this guy, these guys are the best. It was just a glory. It's a glorious morning to live. It's a glory. We were born for such a time as this. God knew that he could trust us with this time. Well, I guess I preached enough, Pastor. Uh, <laughs> um, I want to welcome you to our service today. And especially I'd like to welcome those of you that are here for the very first time. Do we have any first time visitors? All right. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being here today. Anyone else over here? Amen. Thank you for coming. We got Matt, Matt's in the house. Matt, we're glad you're here today. We're so glad all of you are here. After service, if you'll go out to our information booth, there's some people out there that would love to meet you, talk to you, and give you a free gift and a, and a coupon to have lunch in our, in our cafe. We have really good food out there and a, lots of really good fellowships, so be sure you go out there. We're going to um, have a two-minute break. So get up, say hello to somebody you don't know. I know it's really hard, but try it.
your seats. We're going to turn our attention to the screens right now. We have some announcements. Hey, Stella, the gathering is this Wednesday. I can't wait. It feels like we haven't met in forever. I'm so looking forward to hearing from one of our ladies, as well as enjoying some amazing worship. And I love the time around the table when we get to connect with each other and hear what God is doing. The gathering is always such a good time. Fun, fellowship, faith building. What more can you ask for? It's a great place to bring a friend. So invite a neighbor, bring a coworker, and join us Wednesday at 645. We'll see you then. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, the men of the river are at it again. Yes, meat is back on the menu. Saturday, February 24th at 5 p.m. is the annual men's barbecue on the back patio. Guys, bring your knife, bring your fork. We have brisket, we have pork. Vegetarian, no problem, we serve you lamb. Bring a guest for free. Hope to see you there. Do you have a heart to share the gospel but need some additional practice with the bridge illustration? Our Bridge Refresher class is here to help those who are part of Discipleship Foundations refresh, sharpen, and practice sharing the gospel. Sign up today. All right. Well, it's my privilege to introduce you all to a amazing uh, ministry that is reaching souls for the gospel all around the world. And I think it basically started, I don't know how many years ago, where Pastor Tom was first off like, hey, I want to make sure I pass on what made me a, a Christian in terms of knowing the evangelism explosion questions, the two questions, the bridge illustration as a really practical way to share the gospel, and then uh, teaching us the, the topical memory system out of the navigator's ministry, right? So that was his heart, the pastor's heart to equip the church. Then you get other gifted people who are gifted in, in being an entrepreneur and anointed in being an entrepreneur who starts his company called Purpose Founder, which I'm privileged to be on the board for. And Purpose Founder is essentially reaching people in the hard to reach places for the gospel. And this isn't one of those, those organizations where sometimes you could say, uh, there's organizations that are like, hey, we're sewing, which God bless you're sewing, but they, they don't have necessarily anything to show, like bless them and I hope they do. This is an organization that in 2022, they recorded over 300 salvations. It's amazing, 2022. 2023, it went up to 700 salvations. It's amazing. We could, we could clap for that because heaven rejoices for one. And honestly, like, it's so easy to kind of get glazed over and be like, and not even comprehend this. You know, like, uh, somebody who works, Ada, you guys know her. She, I mean, she shares just some testimonies. I'm just like, I can't comprehend how many salvations she's been a part of sharing the gospel. So I'm going to introduce you to this video, and then we'll hear more from Ada right after that. So go ahead and roll it. Millions of people worldwide have never heard about Jesus, especially those in nations where the gospel message is limited or strictly prohibited. At Purpose Founder, we connect with people in the hardest to reach nations. Through the use of the internet, we transcend geographical boundaries and promote engaging content online, offering a positive resource for those battling loneliness, anxiety, depression, suffering, and loss. Our discipleship coordinators offer real-time phone calls, follow-up, prayer, community, and discipleship to anyone impacted by our resources, regardless of location. Do you believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins? I believe that. I believe that. In 2023, we have reached people from over 90 countries, shared the gospel with over 2,500 people, and witnessed over 730 people come to Christ and begin their discipleship journey. There are obstacles faced in numerous nations when preaching the gospel locally. Purpose Founder not only brings the gospel to those in need, but also extends our resources to support their journey so they can deepen their relationship with God. We invite you to join us as we expand our outreach and grow our team. Your donation allows us to continue offering all of our services free of charge to anyone in need. A monthly donation of $25 provides the resources needed to fulfill our mission of sharing the gospel message with one person, helping them begin their journey with Christ. You can donate by scanning the QR code in this video or head to purposefounder.com slash donations. 
In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Woo! Amen. 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 Come on, it's so good. So you got a little glimpse into an actual video call uh, that Ada is doing. And so I just to reiterate, it says $25 monthly goes towards sharing the gospel. And this is awesome because this isn't just like creating babies and then, all right, good luck to you. Their, their goal is to also get them involved in, in uh, community groups. They call them life groups where they're going over the discipleship foundations that you can learn here as well. And so uh, without further, further ado, I invite up Ada to come share more. Give her a hand. Hi, church family. It's so it's so great to be with you guys today. Um, and so just like Pastor Jim said, I get the privilege of working with this foundation called Purpose Founder, where I get to share the gospel with people all over the world. And so I just want to share a testimony with you first before I even get into anything else. Just last week, we had somebody come to Christ who was Muslim for 20 years. And my, yes, clap for that. Clap for that. Clap for that. Just like that video said, and Pastor Jim said again, there have been over 730 salvations last year. And in this year alone, we've already seen over 123 just in January. These are not just numbers. These are people. These are people. And so let's give it up for Jesus. These are people who are giving their life to Jesus. And so um, we, we get to share, uh, we get to teach them, also disciple them. We don't just leave them alone. We, we have weekly meetings called the Life Gathering, where we go over discipleship material. On our calls, we ask the two questions. We share the gospel. We share the bridge. And so we are, we are equipping people to go out and be powerful Christians, because that's what we believe in, Ma changing eternities and making powerful Christians that will go out and recreate what we've ta taught them and share the gospel to the world. And so we get to reach people in the 1040 window. And so if you don't know what the 1040 window is it's the countries where the gospel, if you share the gospel and you receive Christ, you can be killed for your faith. You will be persecuted. And so we're reaching, most of our calls are to those countries. And so um, another, another thing I want to uh, share is that we've reached nine, 90 countries with the gospel, but in 54 of those countries, people have come to Christ. Yeah, clap for, clap for the Lord. And so if you are wanting to get involved with Purpose Founder, there's three ways. The first way is prayer. We are fueled by the power of the Holy Spirit in prayer because we know that we can do nothing apart from God. It's God that prepares the heart and we are just partnering with him so that people can come to Christ. And so the second way is volunteering. We can use your time and your talent. In this church, I know that I'm not the only one who knows the two questions and knows how to share the bridge, right? Yeah, you guys are equipped, thank you, Pastor Tom, for equipping the saints for the work of the ministry. Because, because of his example now, we get to share with people all over the world. And so um, the last way you can, you can um, get involved with us is by your giving. Just like Pastor, um, Pastor Jim said and the video said, just $25 gets us the resources so that we can continue sharing the gospel with people all over the world. And so if you are wanting to do that, we have QR codes in the lobby. Um, you can ask us questions and we'd love to get you more connected and give you more information about us. Thank you so much. Hallelujah, great job, Ada. She has another testimony where she's literally, she's sharing the gospel and she thinks she's having a conversation with one person and she asked them, did you receive Jesus? And you heard multiple voices in the room and it was a family coming to the Lord. So amazing. So hallelujah, such a beautiful thing. There's a booth outside in the lobby. Uh, now we're gonna transition and I invite up our children's director, Carrie North for baby dedications. Another thing to celebrate. Yes, and so on that note, we have parents that are dedicating their children to the Lord. They're raising disciples who will go out and be a generation to, to raise more disciples for the Lord. So um, it's been an exciting weekend. We've had um, nine babies that are going to be dedicated after we finish today. So lots of babies, lots of multiplication happening. A nursery is growing, so it's super exciting. So I would like to welcome up, um, I'll name the families, but you are welcome to bring your family 
family, your friends, whoever came with you, and then I'm going to invite some of the pastors up to pray over these families as well. So first we have April and Jonathan Thomas. They are going to be dedicating their son, Wesley. Yes, amen. Tucker and Samantha Runyon, they are dedicating both of their boys, Forrest and Axel. All right. Preston and Maddie Lee are dedicating their son, Serge. Woo. And then we have Hunter and Miranda Runyon dedicating their daughter, Eliana. So come on up. You guys can come to the center. Come on, scooch this way. Come on, all, come on over. Come way down, yes. Front and center so everybody can see you guys. Yeah. And then we have a gift for each of you guys as well. All right. Well, we're glad in the nine o'clock we dedicated three women because we've been having a rift of boys and they got to have somebody to marry. So we got, we got some guys here and we got some gals. So this is good. All right. So we don't baptize babies because the Bible says you need to repent and believe. And I don't know what these guys would be repenting about even if they could. Right? I don't know, you know. So we believe in the age of accountability. You're innocent until there's a time when conviction comes upon you and you realize I need my Lord and Savior. My senior pastor and another one that worked with him were actually born again and stayed born again, completely born again, actually had visions of hell at five years old. And they got born again. So we know these things can happen. So what we're doing here is we're making a public declaration. Because the most important thing in society is the marriage. That's what's being attacked. Because when the marriage is messed up, then the kids get messed up. So we got moms and dads standing here, and I got a vow that I want you to, to say I, I will after. Will you work with the help of Jesus Christ so that your marriage is godly, so that the household atmosphere is angelic and not demonic? Because we got these families, they're angels at church and demons at home, and it's very confusing to the children. So I'm going to ask you, parents, do you commit to living your lives for the Lord Jesus Christ all the time? Yes. Okay. Next challenge. Will you commit to bringing your children to church, keeping them in fellowship, being part of what God's plan is, the New Testament church? That's, that's the plan of God. And even if you get hurt in church or a wound, you work through it, and you, wherever God takes you from this day forward, you find a Bible-believing, spirit-filled church, and you're there, and your children are there. Do you commit to that? Yeah. All right. Now, we can't do this alone, church. I've sat with more than one 20-year-old that said, the reason why I haven't walked for God for 10 years is the God, godless church member who they observed, and they... They said, if this is Christianity, then I don't want anything to do with it. So will you commit to living a Christian life, being involved in children's ministry, because we need the help. And everybody says, I'm too busy. So is everybody else. <laughs> we need to volunteer and help. So will you commit church to living a godly life and helping these families shepherd their children into eternity? Yes, we will. Amen. All right. Okay, pastors, you can pray for your babies right now. Yeah, lay hands on these babies. I'm going to lay hands. Tim, come on in here. Father, we pray for each one of these children. These are gifts from the Lord. This is life. We're so grateful for each baby. And we pray that you'd keep them safe, keep them from harm. We are praying that you would bring them to Christ at an early age, that they would be filled with the Holy Spirit and power, that they would have an impact on the world. We pray for John Wesley's and Martin Luther's, and we pray for all kinds of powerful Christians to be raised up right here and go to the nations. Thank you for these children. Protect them from harm, from illness, from predators, from anything that Satan has designed to come against them. We pray a hedge of protection around them for all the days of their life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Give them a hand, everybody. So is Melissa here? You still want to give that? I mean, the one for the testimony. 
Yeah, she's the purpose founder. Per- Where are you? Come on. All right, parents, you can go after you get your gift. I just heard this testimony. I didn't realize it was as fresh as it is, but praise God. It's got to do with kids. And so I thought it'd be nice. Parents, you're doing a great job. It's a battle, but it's a battle worth fighting. And one day, these people will make an impact on the world. Come on. Amen. God bless you. Okay, you may take your seats. Melissa, where are you? Come down here, you too. This is just kind of spontaneous spur of the cup, but I, I heard this, and I, I get excited about testimonies. Good morning. <laughs> I had said earlier in the earlier service that if I would have known that Pastor Tom was going to ask me to stand up here, I would have told him after the services. Um, But my husband and I have been on a journey of um, trying to conceive. And when we first got married, he was told that he, you know, it was going to be hard for him to have children. And a couple months ago, I was told that I had an endometrioma um, that could develop into endometriosis and that it was going to make it really hard for me to have babies. And the doctor recommended that I have a surgery to have my uterus removed. Um, Of course, right then and there, I said no, but I still went home and I cried because it's, you know, you don't like to hear that. Well, after many negative tests, um, yesterday we got a positive test. Two two positive tests. And so all, all glory and honor to God because quite frankly, The joy is felt deeper when there is lack and when there is something that feels like it's missing. And so if you are on a journey where you are waiting for a miracle and you are believing for one, I am confident that the Lord's answer is going to be yes and amen. 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 Praise God. (laughs) This is church, folks. You know... I was mistaken as a young man about ministry. And I was always worried about my ministry, but my ministry really was my kids. And now that I have grandbabies, nine to take care of, you realize this is nothing light or small. It's huge. It's huge. So I wanted to say about Purpose Founders, it was born here in this congregation. Successful businessmen has been putting his own money down to pay workers to share the gospel. Now, I wish I would have had a job where I could just share the gospel all day long. And so it's like, here, sit at this phone and lead people to Christ all over the world. How about that? I can't even believe this happened. But see, I don't have the skills that this businessman in our church has. And he knew he was using his skills for secular stuff. But his question was, what what could God do? Now, get a grip on 737 people. That's just about the attendance of our three services. They won three times what's sitting here to the Lord this year. And in some of the hardest places in the world. It's just fantastic. I I couldn't be happier. And it took me two years to find out that he was doing it. It's like, I'm a little slow. But then I heard Ada say she led three people to the Lord at work. And I'm like, how did you do that? (laughs) And then it's like, well, because that's what I do. (laughs) Well, how do you do that? Well, we have this business here. Really? (laughs) All right. Just one more announcement. Churches in the West are weak. And the church is declining in the West because I believe one major factor is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So if you're new to Two Rivers and you haven't been baptized in the Holy Spirit, you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit to infront life. You're going to see it in the message today. Josh Montavon, one of our elders, is going to be teaching at 1 o'clock today. Another elder, Mike Emery, is joining him. This is the place to ask questions. This is the place to be prayed for. If you've been prayed for and things haven't come, this is the place to go ask questions. It's two hours. You can just relax in it and get baptized in the Holy Spirit because it is the empowerment for ministry. This is, we're not backing down on this, okay? 
So two weeks ago, I wasn't here because I was in this building. This is Goshen, New York. This is a bedroom community of New York City. Most of these people who live here drive into jobs in New York City. And I've known the pastor for 12 or so years, and I know that he was a church planner. I know that he rented. I know that his rent was ridiculous. It was like 18000 a month. And it's like, and it wasn't that big a building. So it's like, okay, if you get a stadium for 18000 great. But this was no stadium. And one day, I mean, I, it's kind of do unto others as you would have done unto you. And it's like, you know, this fellowship asked me to start this church here, and then it didn't really help us. God had to do it. And so we didn't get the help we were looking for from our church friends. But I thought, when I heard this guy, I thought, no, I, we're supposed to be helping people. So I got on the phone and I started calling my friends. And I told them the situation. I go, they got a building and they've, they have worked their butts off to get a down payment. And they don't have enough, but we could get them over the top. And so I need 20 grand, 30 grand, 40 grand, 50 grand. Just write the check. And I had a bunch of my pastor friends write the check. So we got $375,000 which was more than they needed, except for, it's just like building. You get in there and you need more money than you think. <laughs> so we all know that drill. Yeah. So look at this cool place. This is right off the main drag. You just turn off there and get into this building. This is what it looks like from the parking lot. Now this is basically an African-American congregation. It's a, they said they're 50% Hispanic. I'm looking in, I don't think. I see 50% Hispanic, 50% African-American, and 30% white. So that's 130%. This is a, not, it's a very unusual congregation. But anyway, Saturday they were having their gala celebrating getting this facility, and they're just going full bore here. I mean, they turned this thing over from offices in 10 weeks. They started working. They had 20 people for, that worked for a contractor, but their whole congregation worked. And they did some crazy stuff, like the pastors, you know, they knew they didn't have that much money. They saved all the wiring from the demolition. And they laid it out on the floor and they, they graded it. Some, you know, women came in and they graded the size of the wire and the length of the wire and they left it in piles. And then they would serve the contractors when they're putting electricity, getting them just the right length of wire. I mean, it's very tedious to do that. Contractors would never do that because it just costs too much money to do. But they did it. <laughs> So here's the senior pastor. He's the guy in the middle. You know why he gets blessed? He's a local church man. And when a church just get together, he comes to the pastor's meetings. And he comes, and he's humble, and he shares, and he works. He was, one, he was, he was on our national board. And I got a heart for this guy, just great guy. I didn't realize how his congregation was, but in our fellowship of 100 churches, he has just joined my group of, wow, your spirit-filled, moving, and power group. It was just there. I mean, I was praying for people to get delivered from demons. I had this little Hispanic girl come up, and I'm praying for her. She's not a little girl. She's a mother. She came because her daughter came, which is cool that teens actually bring their parents to church. She goes, I want the Holy Spirit. So I prayed for her, and it didn't happen. And I'm going, are you born again? And she goes, no. I said, okay, we better start there. So then we got her born again. And this is just amazing church, and it looks like heaven. You know, heaven says there's going to be every tongue and tribe. Churches should look like that. I don't know if you have to go out of your way to do it. I just think the power of God and the presence of God draws it. But what's interesting about this team is you got an African-American there in the center. The guy in the military, which I think is a Marine outfit, he's Hispanic. Then the guy on his uh, left is an Italian. And the guy on the right, is a, he's an Irishman. He's not Irish. He's an Irishman. He would talk, and I'm like, I need an interpreter. <laughs> I can't even get that broke. That guy, that guy's suspicious. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing there. But you know, I watched everybody, I watched every color react with every color with such affirmation and love. And these guys have been doing this for 12 years, so if they wanted to have ugly, they could have already had plenty of time to do it. And they're still together. And that, that to me is Bible, folks. All right, Mark, we are in Lent. We're gonna go through this year the book of Mark, we're going to start at the beginning of Jesus' ministry, and we're going to go through to the passion, his death, his resurrection, and, and that. For Easter, we have for you a devotional out there in the hallway. This costs a lot of money, so if you're just going to take it to throw it away, don't do that. Uh, take it and use it, but it's good. Je Pastor Jessica Ocean has made that, shows this good work. I also want to remind you that we buy 
a subscription for all of you if you want it to Right Now Media. And if you follow the QR code, you can, it opens up thousands upon thousands of videos. Now, theologically, I need to advise you, there's a little bit more reformed here than I'd like. I do not believe reformed theology is biblical. I believe when it ever happens, the Holy Spirit is extinguished. And so there's a little bit of that there, you know, eat the meat, spit out the bones. We picked out six different studies on the Gospel of Mark that you could look at it. You don't even have to look through it. She's already found it out for you. This is free. There's lots of children's stuff there for if you have children too. So what is Lent anyways? Lent is the period of 40 days which comes before Easter. Beginning on Ash Wednesday, which is last Wednesday, Lent is the season of reflection and preparation before the celebration of Easter. Now, I don't like that word Easter. I wish we were Spanish speaking because they have La Pascua, which means the Passover. And I don't know why we don't call it La Pascua. It's a better word than Easter. Where did this come from? It, it's actually a little shady where it came from. By observing the 40 days of Lent, Christians replicate Jesus' withdrawal into the desert for 40 days. So we've had our 21 days of prayer and fasting with the Daniel fast, but here's another time to just say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cozy up with the Lord. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to think about all the things that happened for Jesus to actually arrive in Jerusalem and die for my sins. So here's our topic. Jesus is tempted. Now, your book is going to say Matthew 12 through 15, but as I looked at the text, I couldn't start there because there's these verses before where Jesus gets baptized in the Jordan. And it's a very important starting point, I think, for all of us as Christians. So let's take a look at it. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Now, if you read the other accounts, there's a whole lot more. You learn something about Mark. Mark is very synthetic. It's just, he just gives you the data and goes. Now, people say, why do we have three Gospels? Because the synoptics, which are Matthew, Mark, and Luke, people think are the same. If you think they're the same, it means you haven't read them well enough. Because everyone was written to a different audience. Everything has different information. And Mark, actually, with the temptations of Jesus, just kind of says it happened. <laughs> Luke and Mark, Matthew actually explain it a lot more. But here he is, he's being baptized. Immediately coming out of the water, he saw the heavens opening and the spirit like a dove descending upon him. And a voice came out of the heavens, you are my beloved son in whom you are, I am well pleased. Now, just do that for You have the father speaking. You have the Holy Spirit coming down in the form of a dove and you have the son standing there. Trinity is not in the Bible as a word, but it's a doctrine that's developed because it's all, the only way to explain that three persons had the incommunicable attributes of God. We don't talk enough about this. There are attributes that God has that he did not give to us. He gave us love. He gave us truth. He gave us mercy. He gave us a lot of stuff. But there are, there are incommunicable attributes like omnipresence, being in every place at every time. Omnipotence, being all-powerful. Omniscient, knowing everything. See, we serve a God who knows everything. We're, all, we're kind of wondering if God's going to do the right thing for us. He knows the whole deal. Amen. He knows the whole deal. Yeah. He's not surprised by anything. If you're being mistreated, he knows who's mistreating you. And it's not going to go by without being dealt with. So we've got Trinity there. Now, I want to point out that he says to the son, you are my beloved son. And he says it before he does anything for God. See, we got to get a little reprogrammed from the conditional love that we've been taught by our parents or by our society or by school or even by sports that you're somebody if you do things and you do them right. Jesus is the beloved son before he starts his ministry. This is your identity. When you're a son and a daughter, you don't have to perform. These babies that came down here, I know from experience that they're not going to love their older children. When these children get older, they're not going to love them anymore than they do right now. And that baby is just sucking resources. That's a pod there. I don't get <laughs> You know, they, that baby's not contributing anything to society except a coup. Just a little smile. But isn't it interesting how the little smile just blows you away? It's like, but you know, 
We love him as a baby. And actually, <laughs> we might love him sometimes more as a baby. Because <laughs> they get a little difficult as a teen. And then they come, they, they, at, in their 20s, they get a little bit more nicer. But it's like, hallelujah. So anyway, look at verse 12. Jesus has had this mountaintop experience. The heavens open. God speaks audibly. And then immediately the spirit impels him to go out into the wilderness. I've noticed that a lot of times when you have a high time, the devil will be right there. And you have to know and resist and be ready for his attacks. That's one thing that this passage is teaching. So verse 13, and he was in the wilderness 40 days, being tempted by Satan. And he was in with the wild beasts and the angels were ministering to him. Now after John had been taken into custody, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of God and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Ha, huh. there's so many things. You can talk for a few weeks on this stuff. Just, wow. This is something the whole world has been waiting for. So in the gospel of Luke, there's two things there that really are important when you think about temptation and testing. In 4.1 of Luke 4.1, it says, Jesus went out, look at the bold letter, full of the Holy Spirit. He gets tempted three times and he's successful in the temptation. He comes back in the power of the Holy Spirit. Went out full, came back in the power. Now, when we're getting tempted, here is the question. Did you go out full? The devil is after me and he's winning. Why? We have access to the Holy Spirit. He can live in us, being born again. This is the, the theology of John, the Holy Spirit within you, the indwelling spirit. And then he can be upon you, which is Luke theology in the book of Acts. And the Holy Spirit comes upon to equip for service. Why would we want to live knowing that there's an enemy of our soul who's trying to tempt us? Why would we want to live without our tank full? Now, when I was first getting baptized and looking into the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I was reading some books. I asked my Baptist friends, how full of the Holy Spirit are you? And they're like. <laughs> and then I go to the charismatic church and ask them, and they would always give me a number. Uh, 75. Uh, 90. And then a guy that kind of fits how he's living. Uh, vapor? Vapor. <laughs> I'm living on fumes. Now, I got a problem if you're sitting here today living on fumes. You're missing your inheritance. Your tank is supposed to be full. Jesus went out into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil, but he didn't go out empty. He went out full. And then there's a, you go, is there anything more than that? Yeah, he came back in the power of the Holy Spirit. Temptation and testing are never over until you're done with life, as in dead, and not mostly dead, completely dead. <laughs> so get used to it. Win with Christ's help. Why do we live like Jesus said, I can do some things through Christ who strengthens me? Is that the Bible verse? No. I do all things. But then we whine and complain and say that God's the devil's tempting us and we can't get over it. See, that whining is... You lying. This is a different form of lying. God is able to deliver you. Hang around people that know how to be delivered, know how to stop sinning, and life will be a lot better. Or go find some losers. Yeah, we always got to sin. So here's a little, this is a little above board, but come on with me on this. There's, there's these words in the Bible, and they're written in Greek. They're a little different than English. There is one thing which we must carefully note right at the beginning of our study of the temptations of Jesus, and that is the meaning of the word to tempt. The Greek word, peresen, in English, the Greek word is peresen. In English, the word tempt has a uniformly and consistently bad meaning. It always means to entice a man to do wrong, to seek to seduce him into sin, or try to persuade him to take the wrong way. But peresen has a different element in its meaning. It means to test, and I'll add this, far more in the Bible than it means to tempt in our sense of the word. Jesus is going out 
And we say the temptations, but it's really the testings. He's going out in the fullness of the Holy Spirit, and the purpose is for him, because it always helps the person in the test, and us know that we can overcome. It's to make us better. Tests make us better. Temptations try to degrade us. So, just look at this. A temptation is from the evil one. That's the devil. There is a devil. I don't know if there's a devil. Well, I'm looking at society going, there's a devil and a whole lot of his friends. So, a temptation from the evil one with a goal to weaken, trap, and destroy you. I mean, John 10, 10 says, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. You know what? I want to do witchcraft. Why? You're just signing up to be killed, to be ripped off, and to be destroyed. Well, that sounds like fun. No, it isn't. But you know, part of the lure of Satanism is that churches have no power. We have to admit our lack of power, the vacuum, because humans were created to walk in the supernatural. And we have not enabled that to happen, but I'm telling you, around here it's happening. You thought you knew what happened Wednesday night. I heard the backstory. <laughs> it's fantastic. I had a guy come in Sunday, and I've been praying for this guy and his family for about 10 years. And I'm telling you what, something happened. And when he came to the door, it's like good saved. Not kind of saved, good saved. Yeah. So point one, the temptations of Jesus. Immediately after a mountaintop experience, Jesus found himself led into the desert by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's never going to lead you at a place to destroy you. He's going to lead you to a place where you can find out how big you really are. Coaches do all this, all this all the time in sports. They have different practice activities to show the athlete that there's more in them than they think. They can run faster, they can hit harder, they can jump higher, but they need to be encouraged. And testing is how you get encouraged. You realize, wow, God and me are a majority here. Now, I couldn't have done that without Jesus because you never want to forget that he was there. But you want to know, when I get in a tight spot, God's with me. When the devil comes with his fullest thing, God's going to be with me. I am not alone. Now, why are we suffering alone, friends? Beverly is saying, some of you guys feel this way, and what it means is you're suffering alone. You need to go into the battle with the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Make sure you take that Holy Spirit class. Make sure you pray in tongues. You need to have your tank full. Because when it's full, it's like water up a duck's back. Just, what are we trying to do, devil? That didn't work. And you just kind of feel like this. Wow, he set me up, and I had the discernment, and I had the ability to say no. You know what? Saying no to the devil feels really good. Because yeah. when you say no to the devil, you're going to be later saying yes to God's Amen. best. Amen. You know, a lot of us are settling for second best, and it's the devil, and he, you know, it's like, it's like here, take my little temptation, and the devil's like, boom. How'd that feel? Boom. How'd that feel good? Boom. Why would you want to serve this kingdom? That's right. You got a God over here who wants your very best. Yeah. But in order to get his best, you have to say no to sin. Right. Notice in Matthew and Luke counts, he defeats a temptation by saying, it is written. Now we're going to Argentina uh, in March, and in order to get ready to go, I needed a place to stay for Leslie and her family, because my daughter and her husband and kids are going to go. Who'd I call? I called a guy named Jorge Savucci. Jorge Savucci was the most arrogant, lying bag of dirt I had ever met in my entire <laughs> life. He was absolutely an exceptional piece of trash. I mean, I'm talking to him at his kitchen table. He's in active adultery, living in another town with another woman but he was coming home to just make sure his wife and his daughter's ice cream equipment worked so they could have a living because they had, a, had an ice cream shop on the first floor, or the bottom floor. And I started talking to him. The first time I was like, I went home like I couldn't get a word in edgeways and you gotta know me, that's hard. You're, you're pretty good if that's a guy. I went home thinking this is the most arrogant guy I ever met. 
And then I shared the gospel with him. I shared the bridge with him. And he pushed it back to me. And he said, Tomas, this is for bad people. <laughs> I'm thinking, you're the worst person I've ever met. I didn't say that to myself. Nine days later, he gets saved. He's a pastor now. And his, all his kids serve God, and he's got grandkids serving God. And when I need a house, I call him. Yeah. Because I can trust him. He's like, check the box. You got a house for us, comes up. He, he just delivers because he's good saved. You know, but I told this guy when he was first saved, I said, do you know that the devil quotes scripture? And he goes, no. And I showed him Matthew 4. He's like, he quotes scripture. And I said, what you got to learn here, Jorge? He's got to learn the other part of the verse. Because I remember as a young Catholic boy, we, we look at some cute chick walking by and go, hey, man does not live by bread alone. <laughs> or we'd have a bottle of beer and go, man does not live by bread alone. Imagine the shock when I read the verse the first time at 18 and saw what it really said. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. I'm like, oh! <laughs> Probably was wrong on that point. We win by saying it is written. That's why we teach the discipleship foundations. When you learn the power of Scripture united with the power of the Holy Spirit, you're unstoppable. And I just get a charge out of knowing that people are getting saved all over the world. Oh. It's just like, give me a break. If you don't know the word, we can be deceived because Satan twists Scripture. You have to know the whole verse, not just the piece. So, let's talk about the wilderness a little bit. And he was in the wilderness 40 days. This wilderness is still a wilderness, but it's tamer today. The Bible's pretty clear from Genesis as you move through that in Israel there are wild beasts that will actually kill humans. And God's instructions are, I'll give the land little by little, you've got you've to occupy the land because it's got wild beasts in it. I mean, these are lions, tigers, all kinds of predatory animals. This was not like going out into the Sonoran Desert and seeing a little jackrabbit. <laughs> Although out there is some bobcats, but that's not. You hang around. If you go hiking up in the Grand Canyon, there are mountain lions. And a mountain lion is from about here to here. And if he decides to have you for lunch, he's going to get it. Because <laughs> you're not going to stop a mountain lion. Or a cougar, right? So Jesus is out in this place that is absolutely overwhelming these, but he created them. So things were tough. Satan himself was doing the tempting. Now everybody says, you know, the devil made me do it. Uh, was the devil there? Tell me the devil was there. Well, not really. <laughs> no, a lot of times it's your flesh. And think about it. Your flesh is weaker than the devil. Now, the devil's not omnipresent, so he can't be every place on the earth. He's on the earth working on somebody right now, but probably not in Gilbert. I think he's got some other activity happening that's more exciting than Gilbert. I mean, Gilbert runs with Dilbert, and it's just like, come on, this is, this is he's, gonna be, he's gonna be working on someone who, if they do what they do, is gonna massively impact the world. We got the little demons or our flesh, which sometimes if you feed your flesh, it's like a big old junkyard dog. You got to tell it to go lay down. Go lay down. It's much more satisfying. It's fancy. That's a kucha. That's a kucha. And you know, if you watch me go through life, sometimes I'm just walking along and I go, that's a kucha. It's because I was hearing this thing inside and I just told it to go away. Because if I leave it in there, I'll do something stupid. <laughs> Believe me, I have practiced and know that if you don't get rid of it, you're probably going to do it. So things were tough. Satan himself was doing the tempt this. Most of the time it's our own flesh. He was with the wild beast. Now he created these things. Jesus is perfectly okay in the wilderness because all those things that eat people, he made them. It's like, it's showing his divinity. It's showing his deity. It is saying we serve a mighty God. If we were in that wilderness, we should be taking preventatives. People didn't go in there. We'd have something to fear. Temptation was such that Jesus needed angels to minister. Now, I have rarely been tempted that hard. How about you? We, we kind of exaggerate how hard it is. Yeah. It's like, we've got this little wind of the devil blowing at us. And we're like, oh, it's so difficult. <laughs> no, it's so difficult because you want to do it. First, ten, 
1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, no temptation is overtaking you but such is common to man. And God is faithful who with the temptation will give you the way of escape. So if there's a way to escape, we could actually live a sinless life. So here's how you get victory in Christianity. You admit the reason why you sin is because I want to. You might even have to say, I like to. You know, a person very close to me smoked cigarettes. And when they got saved, they realized it was their fault. And they said, Jesus, take the desire away. And about three months later, they realized they were no longer smoking cigarettes. Because in humility, they admitted that it was their fault. And then they asked for a miracle, and they got it. It's just like, cool. But needing angels, that's something. But now we have the book of Hebrews that says he sends out his ministers, his angels, to those who are heirs of salvation. Now, if you're born again today, angels could be intimately involved in your life. You can't see them, but they do stuff. Amen. They do stuff. They change things. They protect people. I think this. I thought I was Roman Catholic by background because my mom, my dad converted to Roman Catholicism for my mom, but I'm actually a descendant of the third preacher in the Plymouth Colony. I have a history of preaching the gospel. And Satan tried to kill me when I was young and when I was premature, two pounds, 13 ounces in 1957. They called my mom 12 times and said, come down here. Your son's gonna die. But I didn't. Amen. I don't know why, but I didn't. <laughs> but when I was in high school and I was unfaithful and I was an atheist, I was gonna cross from football practice to the grocery store and something grabbed my arm, it grabbed my arm, and my button hit the mirror of an F-150 Ford pickup. This happened to me twice. And I would look and go, there is nobody there. And you go, God in his mercy is going. You're an idiot. <laughs> and you're gonna get yourself killed. But I'm gonna have an angel help you while you're walking around like Mr. Magoo. <laughs> so point three, the kingdom of God is at hand. You know, at the time Jesus was born, most of the Jewish nation had given up hope. There was a few faithful thinking that there was a Messiah like Anna and Simeon, and they were the little people, but the big people were just using their position to rip off people and live luxurious and all that stuff. They'd given up on the kingdom of God. But when this happens, we have this, the kingdom of God is at hand. Now after John had been taken into custody, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of God and saying the time is fulfilled, past tense, the kingdom of God is at hand. Now you gotta do this in order to get in. And see, this is interesting. Humans will do anything. They will hang themselves upside down in a closet. They will travel to foreign nations for a medical cure, this, that, and the other thing. But if God asks them to repent and believe, they're like, oh, no, but no, no. I, I can't do that. See, it's showing where the real battle is. Our rebellion against God. In order to fix that rebellion, you gotta repent, which means you humble yourself, you say you're going the wrong direction, and you turn toward the Savior. Amen. See, and that takes humility, and that's the toughest thing for us. One of the things that I appreciated Saturday when I talked to this person was the humility. The humility. How, is, how do you know if someone's really saved? When you point out something, they say, yes, sir, that's what I was doing. But see, when, when you don't have it and you're not ready to get saved, you'll fight it, you'll be defensive, you'll blame other people, you'll be the victim, you'll do that whole deal. No, 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 no. Now, prayer and praise Friday night, we had several testimonies. One man coming back and saying, you know, I was a Christian, but I got lost, and I led my whole family into the desert, and I'm back. Amen. And a whole bunch of people here had helped him. Amen. But then there was another lady who came to us, and she was demonized, and she was pretty demonized, and she was homeless. And people here, and it was a group of people, they ministered deliverance to her. That's what she said, her words, I've been delivered, past tense, of many demons. And somebody did this. They gave her a room and a bed and a roof to sleep in. They took the risk 
And you can tell because I know the before and after pictures. This woman has had a significant change. Now, is she all the way there? Well, I got this question. Are you all the way there? <laughs> yeah. So the time is fulfilled. We are living at the greatest time in human history. It's going to hell in a handbasket, and we're here to gather people. We're here to reach out the hand. It's getting bad. But when the darkness is the biggest, then God happens. And I'm out of time, but I'm going to do one more thing. Kingdom has got his hand. We can be transferred from the dominion of darkness into the kingdom of his beloved son. If I had time, I would give you four or five testimonies. Because here's what we do. We don't, we, don't, we don't mark it right. We are really seeing things happen. We are really seeing things happen. And I got some stories that I'm hoping that people will come up and do it. But just from this week, there's stories. Now there are different rules. The outpouring of the gifts of the Spirit. Key is repent and believe. So here's our conclusion. Have you repented and believed? You must be born again. Sitting in a church isn't going to get you saved. It's not. I don't care if you've been here 20 years. You have to be born again. Some of the biggest heathen that I've ever met actually grew up in a church, but they didn't get saved. Have you repented and believed? Have you placed everything and every part of your life in the hands of the Lord where he reigns as Lord? There is no part of your life where you reign. Because you know what? You will miss, you will govern poorly. Don't have you learned that yet? Whatever part you keep for yourself, it's a mess. It's like you give it to the Lord and he straightens it out. Have you dedicated your life to the proclamation of the gospel? See, we've had some real miracles because people are learning how to share the gospel. When they share the gospel, then all this other stuff happens because you get saved and you get healed and you get delivered. It's all fun. So stand with me. Prayer teams, come down. If you're not born again, you need to come down and see one of these people in front. I don't like to use emotionalism for being born again. If you know that if you died tonight, you would not go to heaven, you need to come down immediately today and talk to one of these people up front. They will help you say the sinner's prayer and get your life right with God. They will point you to the resources that you need. If you need a healing miracle, if you need a financial miracle, whatever thing you need, we're praying for people right here today. So let's close. Father, we thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for these amazing children. What a gift. Thank you for what you're doing in our midst. We pray that you continue to do it for the glory of your name, not ours, in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. God bless you. Have a great weekend.